Folks, I got a rod in the water because a pickerel pulled it in. I'm trying to hook the line now. I think he's pulled. No, I can't see. Oh! <laughs> All right, folks, we out here fishing for the CCA. I'm gonna start with the blade waker. Got a minnow soaking for some crappy. I'm seeing some fish rise. I'm definitely seeing some fish rise and move around. I think we're going to catch fish today. Oh, fish on, fish on. That's. Down the blade waker, bro. That's a pickerel. Came right out the timber. Hey, little buddy. That's my first pickerel of this year's CCA tournament, folks. On the Teckle Blade Waker. Yeah. And it wasn't on a minnow. It was not on a minnow. Let the record show. <laughs> oh, I love this place, man. I do love this place. All right, let's get you measured. Got the way he leaves. Got work to do. All right, that's my marker. Get you unhook. He hit so hard he hooked himself. All I had to do was reel him in. Hey, give him my lure. You ain't taking the tail off my lure already, bro. That ain't happening. Open up. Give it, give it here. Give it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Pickerel do not like being on bump boards. They hate it. You're gonna be jerks about it the whole day. All right, I, 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 man, I just about, I'm about to snap the picture and here you go flopping again. Jerk, there we go. All right. There she is, folks, not a big fish, but my first pickerel of the CCA tournament. About a 16 incher on the Teckle Blade Waker. Let's go catch some more. Shoop. You see this clump of timber over here? He was sitting right in there, man. Right in there, probably about four feet offshore. That seems to be a pattern with this place, man. They love hanging around timber. Love it. Let's see who else is out here ready to play. GoPro highlight. Now, if I get a pickerel bite on that minnow line, you're probably gonna see that float shoot down because pickerel tend to hit it on a run. That's one way if you're using minnows, you can generally tell if it's a pickerel or not, because that float will shoot down. I mean, shoot down with a quickness. But I was thinking about this place, and I know that most of it's shallow. And that's why I had initially set up to use the Blade Waker. The Blade Waker's got some good weedless qualities, and it runs nice and shallow. Great lure for this fishing area. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I got you. That yeah, Rashawn just got bit. One hour later. Large mouth. Get off of there. Just a little fella. Easy, bud. Easy. Easy. So easy. Have you out of here in a jet? Come on. Close the mouth. Uh, I honestly thought it was structure when he hit because he wasn't fighting that hard. Then I felt this little bit of struggling. A little 12 incher. Thanks, buddy. Oh, you smell good. <laughs> Yo. He followed all the way up to you? Yeah, <laughs> And you might have noticed in the beginning of this what the conditions are for. It was windy today. You know, hear it throughout the video. It was, I think, sustained winds between 15 and 25, gusting higher than that. Despite the fact we wanted to use our kayaks, we had to find a place that was at least somewhat shielded from the wind. 
That's what brought us here and it pays off for us. But that's a tip for y'all, is that when you're dealing with those super windy days, try to find those places where you can get out of the wind. Finding those kind of places can really save your day. Man, I finished House of the Dragon, bro. Excellent. Highly recommended, bro. First really, truly awesome show I've seen in a long time. There she is, folks. Nice size fish. Nice one. Just the hair and 22 inches. Quality. Thanks, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. Folks, I got a rod in the water because a pickerel pulled it in. I'm trying to hook the line now. Where is it? Oh, oh, I might just hit it. He's got a lot of line out. That's gotta be a big fish, dude. Come on, let me hook that line. I think he's pulled. No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> oh. That must have been a giant, man. He's taking that shit to God knows where. There's the bobber. There's the bobber. He's way over there. Way over there. Way out that way, bro. He just, he just surfaced over there. See the bobber? That's him swimming. He's eventually going to get wrapped around something and break it off. He's in the process of wrapping it up right now. I got it. He's wrapped around a tree, though. Oh, do I still have it? Oh, he got off. That was a big one, folks. But at least I'm going to get my rod back. <laughs> That's what I get for leaving my rod. Yep, he broke off. He broke off. So a quick tip for you folks. If you're gonna leave your rod there in the water and step away from it, either open the bale or loosen the drag enough that the little fish can take out line without pulling your rod in the water. But better yet, don't leave your rods unattended because that kind of thing can happen. If he hadn't made it so far so quick, I might have had a shot, man, but he was running. <laughs> Bro. A few moments later. <laughs> there you go. There you go, bro. Is it a bass? <laughs> it's a steep hill, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sweating again. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> oh, <d> <laughs> Pick, holy. It's under my other rods, though. Fudge muffin. The hazards of using multiple rods, folks. Oh, it's even bigger than my last one. Where's my net? Come here, net. Come here. Have a hook in your mouth. Go ahead. Have a hook in your mouth. There we go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> American Snakehead Custom. Yeah. Yep, he's bigger than the last one. Boy, I hope you got a hook in your mouth. I hope you got a hook in your mouth. You got my spinnerbait all in there, huh? All right, then, hang on. There we go, okay. Yeah. Now we're getting to a good size pickle, folks. Yes, I know, I know. Let the struggle begin. You're trying to take your picture for the next 10 minutes, I know I will. And she'll come in at rate of 23 and a half. Now we're getting up there. Uh, I, 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 man. 
Gotcha. Let's see if I can get some sunlight here. There she is, and she smacked that American Snakehead custom. I do mean she smacked it. All right, buddy. 23 and a half, bro. All right. Is what we're looking for. Yes, sir. All right. I'm gonna try to make sure you swim off strong. There we go. All right. When you're ready. There you go. I think I got a crappy. I think I got a crappy. I do indeed. A little crappy. Holy crap, did you choke it, bud? Ow, 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 ow. Quit spying me. I'm trying to save your life. There you go. Look at the little structure. Ooh. It wasn't too far from there. Definitely saw a big bull up a second ago. Either from a good bass or a decent pickerel. Spook that fish. There you are. Fish on. Fish on. Let's see what. Let's see what. I'm starting to. Oh! 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 I think that was a big pick. I do think that was a big pick. Either that or a good bass. Gosh darn it. Oh! <laughs> Hello. Bass. A little better. <laughs> Said the heck with you about board, human. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. Chill. There you go. Bro, 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 bro. There. Chill. One, two, three, boom. He is a rambunctious one. <laughs> 14 incher, hit a rated shore. American Snakehead Custom Spinner Bait. <sighs> Thanks, buddy. Off you go. Well, while I did catch a few more fish out there, those were the major catches. So let's go over the gear I was using, the tactics that were successful, and those decisions that ended up costing me in the end. So first things first, let's go over what worked. By far, I caught most of my fish on the American Snakehead Custom Spinnerbait. That's a baby cobra, double serrated willow leaf blades with a trailer hook and flamingo pattern. The line that I'm fishing it on right here is Berkley X9 40 pound test that is spooled on my Shimano SLX DC reel and that is my Mojo Bass spinnerbait rod by St. Croix. All of that worked together beautifully and caught me a lot of fish, including that second pickerel that was around 22 inches or so. I didn't get him on camera because I thought my GoPro was running when it wasn't, but at least I got the cell phone video for you. And in terms of how I was working that spinnerbait, I was essentially reeling it just fast enough to keep it off the bottom in most cases, or if it was bouncing on the bottom, I would jerk it free to make sure no leaves or anything were staying on the hook. And a lot of times it seemed like that bumping along the bottom triggered those strikes. Now the other pattern that worked for me that could have worked better had I made better decisions was using the minnows. I got those minnows from Edgemere Bait and Tackle. Definitely check them out. Great shop. You might have seen my video on them before and they were quality minnows. They were working hard out there. I just made some bad decisions. So, what was the major bad decision? I left my rod unattended without either opening the bale or loosening the drag. So I had a big juicy minnow sitting out there. A pickerel took a liking to it. He liked it so much that he pulled my rod into the water. Had I opened my bale or loosened my drag, we would have had a different outcome in that situation. But hard lessons learned, or at least lessons relearned, because I've learned that lesson before. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You'll see me at this location again, and some videos coming up real soon. Only next time, 
I bring a kayak with me. So you can check it out and see how that ends. Thanks for watching, folks. Good luck on the water and have a good one.